pay. All others are volunteers. Free services. The only two people on the payroll, you and Mrs. Pastor. Where well, Mrs. Pastor is the secretary, and you are chairman of the board. You are deceiving yourself, the two of you. It's true. The pastor will now announce it's time for offering. The wife will now hold the bag and collect all the offering. Who is supervising it? The pastor. Who is counting it? The wife. And the two of them will take it to the bank tomorrow morning. You are not growing. You can't continue like that. It's not going to help you. I talk about people who don't bring up others. You must bring up others. You must train others. You must. If you're a lady here, you're married, your husband is not here, I'll allow you to close now because I'm still going to take some minutes. I want to excuse you and allow you to go home. Don't worry. I want to let you go home now. So you go and get ready for work tomorrow. Huh? Okay, there's a session tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. But if you are if you're here as a lady, but your husband is not here tonight, I want to let you go home now. So nobody be asking you why, why, why haven't you come since? Is there nobody like that? Or you are saying I should continue? <laughs> what some of you don't know is I can see you from here. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. I'll take some 15 more minutes. The relationships you're having with the members of the church, with those with whom you work, with your spouse, etc. For example, in the church, something has happened to a brother. Maybe he had an accident. He's been rushed to the hospital. What is the role of the church? Somebody said, the church will pay the hospital bills. Not necessarily. The church could, but not necessarily. You see, there's something that, that, that Paul was teaching in the Word. Can we, can, we, can we examine it? Turn to First, first Timothy. Chapter 5. Are you there? First Timothy chapter 5. Have you seen it? Alright. I would like you to read from verse 16. Go on. Did you see that? I don't like the way you read. First time I told you to read something, this is the way you read it. I was concerned. Now again, if any man as if you are not seeing the Bible. Can you read it as if you are you are alive? Read it again. Aha. Uh -huh.
Does that give you the sense of the Word of God? For every case, whether widow or needy? That's it. See, he says, if any man or woman that believeth, if a Christian, he says, if anyone has widows, he says, let them, let that brother or sister who has a widow. In other words, if you are related to a widow, if you are the son of a widow, if you are the daughter of a widow, if you are the cousin of a widow, if you are related to a widow, and you are a Christian, he says, you help that widow. So the church doesn't have to be charged. So the church now can be responsible for those that are widows indeed. In other words, those that don't have anybody to help them. But here you are. There are people who can actually help you. But no, you're not going to call them. You want to put the responsibility on the church. Now that's not right. It's painful when three friends, three friends who know this person very well, the three of you know you can do something about her situation. You now come and tell the pastor about sister so-and-so who's going through some terrible condition and we want something to be done by the church. What about you? Why should the church be charged? This is what he's saying. If any man or woman that has a widow, maybe it's your friend. The widow, the widow is your friend. You don't have to be, there's no, look at it. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, Definitely not talking about the spouse because the widow, the spouse is dead. So if your friend, if you're, if you're related to that person by way of friendship or it's a biological relationship or whatever relationship there is, you know that person. Okay, three of you that know him, three of you that know her, why don't you do something since you can? So that the church can be responsible to those who are actually helpless that's what he's saying so when a brother comes to you or a sister comes to you um sister so-and-so uh is in a very serious condition needs to you say oh brother thank you for coming with that information please um what can you do what can you do Well, Pastor, I can give 20. Ah, no, no. Make it 50. <laughs> Say, ah, no. 20. <laughs> or didn't you really see the condition? Say, ah, I saw the condition. That's why I can't use Okay. <laughs> okay. Make it 60. Say, Pastor, but I'm already doing something about it. Like what? Say, I'm doing something. I, no. I just want to know what you have done so that we'll know what more to do. Okay. I gave her some money. How much? 15,000. Ah, only 15. Can you add something to it? Pastor, add something to it. The Lord wants us to help those who are really helpless. There's some people that can be helped by individuals. They should go ahead and help them. But here's the point. The church needs to recognize the needs of those within the fold. Amen? The church needs to recognize how to help those. You know, sometimes when you want to raise money, for those of you who have been at the Kedja, you understand how the, the times that I might ask for money for something i don't think that it must be everybody that must give for it take for example there's a needy brother or a needy sister um we say they've just driven them out of home and we know from relating with them that they have no options there's no way out okay everything is not money let us explain the actual condition you may be surprised there'll be someone who has a home for them to come into sometimes we make some things look like it's all about money but they may have that thing that you're trying to pay for so explain what the need really is don't say we need 150,000 for house rent for this sister no we need a home 
Start from there. We need a home. They've been driven out of home. They have no way out. Is there anything that any of us can do about it? Someone may have a ready place. Okay, maybe don't, they don't. Don't put the whole church through it. Neither do you have to go and sign money from the church account. Ask. Can we have like five or six or ten brethren who can give some money for this need? For some people, 20,000 naira is little. They can deal with it quickly. For some people, 20,000 naira is going to be um, a hard thing. It will take them some months to put that together. So, okay, can we have 10 people who can give 20,000 each? That will come to 200,000 and we can help this family get a home. Okay. Then you get them. Maybe one person might say, I can give the whole 200,000. Maybe two people. Maybe ten. Now, if it's not enough, okay, can we have some more who may want to give 5,000? Then let's check how much we're going for. Then it gets to the 20. Okay, we got, we got, we got 200,000 now, or 250,000 now. Okay, let's stop, stop, stop. Let's stop. We've gotten the money. We've gotten it. Now, the next thing is using that money right. Helping to see to it that they actually use the money to get the place. Now, who are those we help? Not every crier. Not everyone who's coming to the church to say, we need something. Because we have members. We have our own brethren. That's why he says, those that have people to help them get fixed. So we can help those that are widows indeed. All right? Now, this is different from helping the poor that are outside. This is in the church, in the house of God. Hallelujah. I would like to commend your efforts. Um, the last time I talked to you about when a member of the church has a loved one that has passed on, and uh, what the church should do, or even a member, when a member passes on, uh, and how the church should be responsible and get involved and so on. I have observed from asking questions and from the feedback that we have improved tremendously in that area. Yeah. And um, I think that that is beautiful. That is really beautiful. I thank you for that. It's our way of showing the love of Christ. We must never forget it. It should be our way of life. Helping those that need us. You know, when a loved one dies, or a loved one gets seriously sick, it changes the plans. It changes your agenda. It changes your schedule. That's one of the reasons we should pray for our loved ones. Because everything you're doing can just change at once. All your plans, the calendar could just change because of one event. Praise God. 